protection and mercy yes. for me and my family, particularly my grandson. Mm -hmm. You know, last week he came out with home and they pulled him a breathing tube. Mm -hmm. This week he's walking and talking. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Right. Well, the little ones have a gay selection. You guys can come forward and get in your places.
everybody else to hear what the kids have been learning. So I, as I ask you guys a question, you can just speak into the microphone, okay? Here's another. Here's another microphone. And to those that's going to answer, make sure you get the microphone. Okay, first and foremost, you guys, why did Jesus die on the cross for us? Go ahead, Jordan. Speak it in the microphone. Get y'all here. So we can live. So we can live. Oh, Amen. Samara, get the microphone. Where did they put the nails in Jesus? Uh, Samara, where did they put the nails in Jesus? You can't remember? Noel, where did they put the hands in Jesus? On his hands, on his feet. On his hands, on his feet. So Jada, there was two people in the Bible that God created first. What were their names? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Okay. And, and, um, Cameron, what did God tell Adam and Eve not to do? To not eat um, the fruit. To not eat oh, the evil and the tree. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and RJ, what happened? Tell us what happened. You know, Eve decided to listen to whom? Who did Eve listen to instead of listening to God? The snake. Yeah, the snake. Which represents who? Who is this snake? The evil devil. The evil devil. <laughs> and then, you guys, what happened when they bit the fruit? What happened? They knew they were what? Everybody say it. Naked. They knew they were naked, yes. So what, what did they have to go do? Who, who I have left? Um, Kamora, what did they have to do? They got to leave. Yeah, they got it and they had to cover themselves up. Yes. So in the Bible, who else I have left up here that? Kamaya. So we talked about a man. And there Jesus told this, God told this man to build something. What was his name? Noah. What did Noah have to build? An ark. An ark, yes. <laughs> Rihanna, get the microphone. Rihanna, why did Noah have to build this ark? What was going to happen? Days yeah, it's going right. <laughs> so, Samara, I'm going to come back to you. How many people were saved? How, how many people went in the heart that was saved in the heart? The family? How many people were in the family? Does anybody remember how many people? Jada, how many people? Eight. There was eight people that were saved. Yes, there was eight people that were saved. And okay, now I'm going to go through. This is our last thing. I want you guys to tell the people the fruit of the Spirit. What are the fruits? So we're going to start with Kamora. Name one. Yes. Noel, name one. Yes. Jordan, name one. Joy. Khalees, can you name one? Faith. Faith. Jada, can you name one? Peace. Kamora? Faith. Faith. I mean, come, come on, I'm sorry. Kindness. Rihanna. Self-control. RJ. There's one more. Yes, yeah, say it out loud. Gentleness. Gentleness. See, that's what we can learn. And these are your babies. These are your babies. You just have to train them up in the way they should go. And then, this is a perfect time. Yeah, they learn so much more, but... God bless from evangelist Mrs. Deborah Hester. Amen. Amen. And it says um, Psalms 5 and 12, let God favor 
be on your life. And it says, love you, Pastor Ash and Sister Ash. She loves you. She loves all of you. Um, our announcements, we have Friends and Family Day that's approaching. It's a whole weekend. So it starts on August 26th. And that is a Friday, and that service starts at 7 o'clock or 6.30? It's 7.30. That service starts at 7.30. And again, you'll have the chance to witness what God is doing for these young people because they have an awesome, awesome ministry that they want to share with you guys on that night. And also, please just invite all your friends and family because on Saturday, it starts at 1 o'clock here at the church, and you have an opportunity to win $100 to the, most, to the person that invites the most family and friends and then invite them same family and friends to come back out on Sunday to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then on September 30th, correct, we have um, a lock-in at Thatcher Park for all the young people, for uh, young adults, old people, old adults. You can just come out and just have fun. Um, you can invite your family. If you are under the age of nine, right, nine, we are asking that you are accompanied by an adult. And the price for that is $10 per person and $30 per family. Amen? All right. I think that's all the announcements. Now we can prepare for our morning offering. Amen. Can I have Brother Philip to come here for me? It's like way in there. See, you thought you got out of it. Didn't you? <laughs> can everybody please sing? direction of my ushers, we're going to let Charity get them together. See, this is how we train our children, so when they get older, they, they'll know the way of the Lord. No way else you can get in the middle. And then we have Kamai over here. Go we'll start in the back. And we have Noel in the middle. And we also have Jordan over here on the end. So you guys are in the direction of the little ones, okay? All right, so you're going to stand, extend your hand and have the people come out. Wow. 
Son, Miss and Ash. Amen. Amen. Seven, I think seven good responses or something like that, just to try to defeat one bad comment. You know, that's a lot. You know, which basically tells us we'll believe one bad thing before we, somebody tells us six good times. You know, somebody can tell us one thing six times, but we'll still believe that bad thing. And it's almost gonna take that seventh or eighth just to kind of break our mindset of it. And so there's a lot of things we have to combat, we have to fight against. 
even doing with our own children. Amen? Amen. Verse 27, you have it? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to do what? To confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So he's taken the things that you would consider foolish, the things that you wouldn't even think about, and I'm going to use that to confound the wise. Those who are kind of smart, those who are intelligent, I'm going to mess their whole mind up by taking something they never would have thought would work. I guess it would kind of be like... Uh, you know, the scripture says, uh, you know, the rocks will cry out. It's like, if you don't praise him, he'll make the rocks cry out. Because that would be kind of messed up if you walked out of church today because you really didn't praise him. And as you was going to get in your car right over here, <laughs> these 12 rocks start crying out. <laughs> You'll probably come back in the church. <laughs> Might get you to praise him. Be like, oh no, I'm a, or somebody like, I'm out of here. And whoever parked along this line right here, you started walking by, and they started, oh, you're just a wonderful God. You'd be looking around, and if you've seen the rocks Great. crying out, or the rocks begin to look at you and say, what's wrong with you? Great. I'm stuck right here. I can't even move. Great. At least you got life. I'm just here. And you wouldn't even praise him while you was in there? Come on. They said, I wish I could be you, but I'm just stuck out here. I got some pain on me. I can't do anything, but even I know God is good. Amen. Amen. I'm just taking the foolish things that seem foolish and I confound the wise because if we get wise in our own mind, he said, I'll take the very things that you didn't think could do something, I'll make them do something. Matter of fact, a lot of times they give more glory to God than we do. A lot of times the animals give God more glory than we do when we're not operating and doing what God has asked us to do. When the tree, sometimes I, you know, sometimes on a nice day, whether it's here or not, I'll just go out here and sit, but someone's real nice. I'll just sit. I know what you're talking about, Mother Frankie, because she says she just sits on her balcony sometimes, and I'll be just, I'll just watch the, the leaves begin to blow. And I say, oh, we're just so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I start thinking of scripture and stuff like that. You know, you can't, you don't know where the wind is coming from. He said, but you hear the sound. And I start thinking how even the trees are giving God glory by just waving in the wind. Sometimes I just can't even muster up a thank you. Come on. Come on. Good. Man, I wish you had your shofar here so I can just get you to blow the shofar for me and help me out. Solid. Come on, play the keyboard. My solid. Yeah, yeah, we gotta help bring the spirit back inside. My solid. <coughs> Amen. Verse 28. And base things of the world and the things which are despised have God chosen, yea, the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. So again, he's, he's, he moves in ways that we can't even understand. The scripture said his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You know, our mind a lot of times can't fathom. One of the ministers said, and I'm surprised, but still it's done a little bit. When he was in our meeting, it's just really good. He said, you know, since God is outside of time, he has no time. He's outside of time. God is already in the future. So actually, today is Sunday. God is already in Monday. Waiting on us to get there. He's already there. What's awesome about it, he's not only there... But he's there, and he's already set the day and gave you the things that are going to help you for tomorrow. Just yes. waiting for you to wake up, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When you go back into your past, God was already there. Thank you. And
and He got you to this far. And even right now in your present, He's right here. Because He just fills all space. And so that begins to blow our mind. So God always seems to do things that we may not think would make sense. And that's what He did with the children of Israel. Joshua chapter 5. That's, that might be my theme song for today, so I just might have to interject that every once in a while. <laughs> Amen. Joshua chapter 5. And I want to start right here at the end. Verse 13, and then we'll go into 6. So we'll read, talk a little bit, read, talk a little bit, and get out of here. Uh, verse 13, 5 and 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And which I think is just so awesome. So, he, you, know, I, I, you know, I like getting a visual. When I read, I, I see a visual. It's like, I see this man with a sword drawn. And he's like, you know, because Joshua's really kind of like in fight mode also. Because he's, he's ready, ready for to go to take the promised land. He's looking. He's like, hey, are you for me? Or are you with our adversaries? Because if he's with his adversaries, he's getting ready to fight. And he's basically like, no. But I'm here on behalf of the captains of the hosts. And Joshua knew right then that he came, sent by God, and began to worship. And then he's asking, then what should I do? And then he, he gets a command from God. In verse 15, the captain of the host of the Lord of hosts said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes, for the ground that you stand in is holy ground. Verse uh, 6 and 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor, and ye shall compass the city all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Seven priests shall bear before thee the ark, seven trumpets of rams, horns, and seventh day he shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when they hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Verse 6, And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests, said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord. So now he's going on to tell them that this is how we're going to do it, based upon how God has given it to them. And so before this part, uh, I think about a week or so ago, we talked about how they had to go through the cutting. They had to go through the circumcision before they could ever go into the promised land. You know, there has to be a circumcising of your heart before you can ever go and receive the promise. Your heart has to have some cutting happen to it. Otherwise, it just remains a heart that's hard. And, and, and you just keep your same mindset. Um, it, it's easy to keep the same mindset. It's so much easier to keep the same mindset. It takes a little bit more effort to change it. Because now you change everything that you know. And when you change, begin to change things that you know, it takes you outside your comfort. And we like being a people of comfort. Come on, man. Come on. Amen. I don't know who, who this is for, who's going to touch or whatever. But I believe a little bit of pie touched just by all of us. Um, you know, sometimes you can, this is an awesome thing about God too. You can come to service and you can, you know, it's like, man, it's like he was talking right to me. 
And everybody walk out here and like, he was talking right to me. No, he was talking to me. No, he was talking to me. <laughs> or sometimes you think, was he at yeah, my promise? Who told him? You know, but that's what God begins to do because his word is just like that. That's yeah. right. And his word is just good. Verse 7. And he said unto all the people, Pass, come past the city, and let him that is armed pass before the ark. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn passed before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and rewarded, and re-reward re came after the ark. The priests going on and blowing the trumpets, okay? Now they come around the wall, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. And I begin to, begin to, begin to think about this uh, even a couple of weeks ago, and I, I mentioned on how... You know, my mom, when she was going through some of the things she went through, and, you know, my mom has a, a, a speech impediment, she stutters. And so it bothered me how when she would, you know, imagine, I can only imagine, I can't ever really just say I sat down and have talked in depth with my mother about it. I've been thinking about doing that a little bit because I'm just kind of curious about some things. Um, but I, I watched the after effects of it. And so it would make me upset when, when she finally would almost get enough nerves to defend herself and my dad would to tease her or make fun. You know, and so as a child, you know, I, I just would be upset. You know, and I couldn't do anything because I was too, too young. But then I think about how in her silence there was a lot of power. And she never even had to say a word. And yet still love. And still did. Still cooked. Still clean. Still took care of her family. In the midst of turmoil. Hallelujah. He takes the things of the world and he will confound the wise. Sometimes he'll take the thing and go against nature to make you really wonder. Before my father passed, I can remember sitting down, me, him, and my brother, and we're kind of talking about old times and stuff like that. And oftentimes when we get to talk about old times, I kind of shut down. I don't, I don't really talk about old times that much. Um, that's just, that was just me. Um, I lived it. I don't like to constantly relive it. You know, you know. Not, I mean, I like to kind of move on. Because sometimes just reliving it just keeps that emotion there. So you know, when we was sitting there, and I, I really wasn't saying that my brother he's doing most of the talking. And I'm just sitting there, and uh, you know, he's, you know, he's getting upset at me because he's like, "But you ain't saying nothing. Come on, boy. What, what, what you say? What you gotta say?" I'm like, I ain't saying nothing. And I heard my father say, basically, he said, I, I, can't, I can't do anything about what I did. He said, I messed up. I can't change what I've done. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry for what I've done. And he's kind of, almost kind of emotional a little bit, you know, and they kind of there and they emotions. And I guess I'm in my emotions too, but mine was like internal. I'm just internalizing things. I'm sitting back analyzing because sometimes you're trying to make sense of things. And I, I began to think about, and so even a couple of weeks when I kind of mentioned that, I started thinking about this passage of Scripture, you know, how the silence sometimes will get you more than the noise. Everything in, within you, everything around you will tell you, make all the noise you can make. But God says, don't say one thing. Don't make, don't utter a sound. Can I, can I, can I use 
the children, how many people are 21 and younger in here? Everybody 21 and younger? <laughs> besides that back row. I didn't say, no, I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> I didn't say, okay, okay. No, everybody 21 and younger, stand up. Okay. Everybody 21 and younger, come right up here. I know y'all didn't know y'all was going to be used today, but y'all being used today. Okay, so that's quite a bit of y'all, huh? We got some more babies back there too, they being good or bad. Tell them babies to come on on here too. Tell Andrea to bring them babies on in here. Andrea, bring those babies in here. Okay, so what I want y'all to do is line up right behind Brother Brandon heading that way. But Brandon, you stand this way. You face me and everybody line up, y'all face me getting in that way. Just like that. Stephen, you, you come in front of Brother Brandon. Only because you're older than he is. He's just taller. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I know. I mean, Stacia's back here too. She's older than all y'all. But, but you know, y'all are men. Y'all supposed to be leading the charge to help protect the women. So y'all don't think I had a reason, but I do. Loud cheerings. In the name of Jesus, right now. <laughs> See, see, but that's that's cool. That's, <laughs> the, it's part of a man's responsibility to protect the women. Ooh, Jesus. We, I know we in 2016. I ain't knocking 2016. I'm grateful for 2016. I honestly never thought I'd see 2016. I thought the Lord was coming before 2000. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, man. Back, I thought he was probably coming somewhere around 1993. <laughs> because how do you figure that out? Why? Because you know we just we trying to figure stuff out. That's what we do. We be trying, but you can't figure God out. He said, "No man know the day or the hour." He turned that air down a little bit. It's hot down here. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and so how I figure that because it's going to be seven years of tribulation. And when you look in the Word of God, just about somewhere, uh, God dealt with man differently every 2,000 years. Give or take a little bit based upon the Jewish calendar because we can't just go by ours. And I'm just giving you all a little bit. It ain't got nothing to do with the message. We're going to get back there. I'm just telling you how my mind thought. Not just mine. He is too. Uh, we come back to the same, same background. So if there's seven years, then I believe that we're going to get up out of here prior to the tribulation. That takes 2000, year 2000, somewhere before 2000, we got to be out of here. But guess what? It's 2016. Amen. And, and that, that's okay. However, that still doesn't negate our responsibility as men. Right. See, the world would say, every man for himself. But God takes the things of the world to confound the lie. So I'm going I'm to I'm be Joshua, and you're going to be Caleb, okay? I means you got a different spirit, young man, all right? Hey Amen. you got a different spirit. Me and you had a better spirit than everybody else out here. Matter of fact, everybody else that's sitting is actually dead. They died because they murmured and complained, and they thought everybody behind us was going to be the one that was going to die. They thought their enemies would prey on them. And God said, but since you didn't believe me and you wanted to murmur and complain, and since Joshua and Caleb had a, had a better report, and they had a different spirit, actually said Caleb had a different spirit, but you know, Joshua was the leader. Everybody 21 and younger, they're going to die. They'll never enter in. God said, I'm going to use a generation that you thought would not make it. Which is scary because that means there's a whole generation in here 
that God, that missing God, and instead of giving God praise and glory and being obedient to God, they felt like they really didn't take all that, and they murmured and complained, and God said, I'm going to let them die off, and I'll use somebody that you never even thought would do it. And then I'm going to let you enter this promised land in a, in a manner that nobody would have ever expected, because once they seen the banner of God, the flag of God coming, when they seen the ark of God, they knew these people were they that came from Egypt. And they understood when they came from Egypt, this is the God that really everybody should serve, even though they still worship false gods. They was afraid of them. They knew who they were. So y'all gonna follow me, okay? Now y'all don't say nothing. Y'all don't say a word. Alright? We just gonna walk. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Sit down for a moment. Don't go too far. Just sit up close. Just, just get in where you fit in. Cause we just gonna kind of act this thing out. So this, this is the children's day to day that's being used today. But this, this is really how it was. So they're ranging from only two older ones is Joshua and Caleb. Everybody else is twenty one and younger. Everybody else is twenty one. And younger. It's a whole new generation. They said they walked around the city once and they went back to the camp. And you have to imagine what the people in Jericho, what in the world is going through their mind. I mean, here they got great big walls and they're watching them because they're, they're already afraid. Now, mind you, when the spies went, Rahab hid the two, two of the spies because she said, hey, we know y'all coming and we fear who you are and we fear your God. Since I helped you out and hid you, will you, hey, will you protect me and mine? So it took a prostitute. It took a harlot who had enough sense because of the grace of God to ask for mercy when you come. So I can only imagine as everybody, I mean, they're, they're probably they're getting their gear on. And here they are. They just walked around the city one time and didn't say a word. Okay, get back on out. This is, this is fun. That's right, come on. That's right. This is fun. They, 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 they like, this is not fun to me. Just keep getting up and down. Come on in here, you right. Come on, come on, come on up here with me. Well, go on, sit down before I hurt you. <laughs> sit down somewhere. That's my grandson, that's why I talk to him like that. He made me want to get him. All right. So we're going to, the second day, they marched again.
like sharks. <laughs> I mean, this seems so crazy. This is so bizarre. Now, the scripture doesn't say that you heard them mumbling and complaining. It doesn't say. It doesn't say that anybody pulled Joshua off and said, hey, man, we know you and God like this. We know that. We believe. But this is kind of crazy. Like, what, what are we doing here? They don't say anything. They just follow. It says they, they went around the city once for six days. On the seventh day, they walk around the city and for seven times. And then on the seventh time, they shout. So we're on the seventh day, and we're going to walk around the sixth time. And on the seventh time, that's when we're going to shout. Y'all got that? So we're going to pretend we've already went around five. This is number six.
of the walls beginning to girl to topple down? Could you imagine the excitement when they first played it? Was like, ah! And they began to like, ah! I was like, hey, this is, ah! This is pretty strong. They probably just kept on yelling until the wall came down. But it wasn't the shout that brought the wall down. That's right. It was their obedience to God that brought the wall down. Some of your walls won't come down because you won't be obedient. You can shout all you want, but you didn't do it like God said. He gave him a pattern, and any time you follow a pattern, that wall come down every time because all you're doing is following God's instructions. If you do what He said, He'll bless you. Come on. If you try to do it on your own, it's not going to work. He didn't say go around and each time make a shout, but on the seventh day shout, no. Go around once. Don't say a word. Yep. It was, that city was huge. This is a little sanctuary. You realize how, how hard that was? We looking at each other, we snickering. <laughs> you trying to keep people in line? I'm sure they probably had to try to keep some people in line. I don't know if they have the little babies out there, you don't say that. But they just had to keep people in line. They trying to do this thing. They might have been side by side. I don't know, two by two. But here they doing this march. Had to be, had to be powerful. And the people on the inside fearing, thinking like, what in the world they doing? And then they go home. That was one time. Next day, boom, do it again. Go home. And they probably sitting there thinking, I don't know what's gonna happen, boy. We just going, we just being obedient. Now at home, they probably was like, man, this thing gonna work. I don't know. But we are gonna find out. And on that seventh day, they go around seven times, and then on the seventh time, then you make a shout. God has a pattern every time for deliverance. Anything outside of this pattern, you'll never be delivered. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, God, hallelujah. Thank you. Sometimes we're trying to do things, we're trying to fix it on our own way. And you can't fix it on your own way. He has a set pattern in his word for deliverance. Amen. Amen. We talked about this just a little bit this morning. It's just really, really good. He, he, John the Baptist, we talked about John the Baptist last week, I think it was. The first message he preached was repentance. Jesus came on the scene, getting ready to start his ministry at the baptism. The first message he said, repent. If you try to come to God outside of repentance, you're not coming. Amen. You ain't got to be missing the word. Just check it out yourself. We can sit down and talk about it. I'm just trying to tell you there's a pattern. God always done things in patterns. When you look at the tabernacle, it was a pattern. When you look at how he took the children of Israel, it's a pattern. They came from Egypt. But before they came from Egypt, they had to apply the blood over the doorposts. He said, I want you to take the goat. I want you to kill it. I want you to take the blood. I want you to apply it over the doorpost because the death angel is coming. Everybody that's inside the house will miss the death angel. They will be spared. He said, matter of fact, and I also want you to get these bitter herbs and I want you to eat it because I want you to remember the taste of bitterness of what this, this country has done to you. He wants us to remember the bitterness of the world. And when you can remember the bitterness of the world, it'll keep you from going back in the world. But you cannot get free until you apply the blood. Amen. Amen. See, I'm, you'll give us shouts then. <laughs> this is good true. I'd be a bad preacher if I tell you there's a pattern and I don't tell you the pattern. I mean, really? It's like, man, that was really, really good. Man, that's a way to get out of here. Well, how? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just know you can get out. <laughs> and I tell you, re repentance is a gift from God. That's a, that's a blessing. That's why he says, the day you hear my voice, Hard not your heart. And you don't know how long you have. That's right. But it wasn't their shout that brought their wall down. It was their obedience that brought the wall down. If they had did it any other way, the wall wouldn't have came down. Matter of fact, right. you don't know if they might have been killed. Who knows? 
They might have went in trying to do something and been killed. I mean, we learned that the very next battle. Here they destroyed Jericho. Do everything they did. Because it really wasn't them. But then they took. Then they go. They, they took some stuff they weren't supposed to take. And so they go into Ai, which was a smaller place. A lot smaller. Matter of fact, he's like, man, don't even send that many. I forget how many, like five thousand. I mean, I just only send a few thousand people. We, don't, we ain't going to waste all our people on that. We don't even need that many. They, they, they easy. They just go in there and kill them real quick and come back. <laughs> they got in there and got hurt. Why? Because Aiken stolen something that he wasn't supposed to steal when he hid it underneath his tent. Because he wasn't obedient. Obedience is so important. Hallelujah. But when you begin to be obedient and hear his instructions and follow it, those things in your life that you're battling, you begin to be set free from. You first have to repent. You've got to have a change of heart, change of mind to turn to God. You believe his word. You respond to his word. You have to. Well, you don't, you don't have to, but you have to do it if you want to be saved. Salvation without repentance is no salvation. I mean, I'm almost done. I know this is a tough one. This is the tough part now. I was good before that. I got you. Salvation without repentance is not salvation. Because you have to repent in order to be saved. That's right. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. After they heard the word of God, it was pricked in their heart. And then they said, but they asked him, what, what do we have to be, what do we have to do to be saved? He says, repent. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's some who've received the Holy Ghost even before baptism. Amen. So I want to let you know it wasn't the water, but it was their heart. They had to repent even before they could open themselves up for God's Spirit. Then they believed on Him. Amen. He's crying out to you. Hallelujah. And He's letting you know. Some of the things you want to be set free from, you need to repent. There's a pattern that I've established, and if you be obedient, tell me those walls will come down. Now you can make the choice to do what you're doing. And that may be all right for a while, but it'll only be for a while. This thing is, your life is temporary. If you was to die today, could you say with 100% surety that heaven is your home? If you can say that, then that is a wonderful thing. You need to be able to be able to be able to feel rest assured in that. I don't say that because I'm the pastor. I say it because I know. He is my rock. I, I, I know that. I know he's my rock. But if you cannot say that, you need to make a change. And I would make that change today. You really do. You need to make that change today. Don't wait. Tomorrow's not promised. But we can repent today. We can get baptized today. We can be filled with the Holy Ghost today. Today is your day. Hey. Is there one that's here? So I'm ready for that change. One that's never been baptized in Jesus' name. You're right. So I want to get down in Jesus' name today. One that's just never really committed and said, you know what, I'm ready for a change. It's time. I need to be set free of some things. You know what? I just want to obey the word of God. Now, I say this for the grace and the mercy of God. 
leadership. And you just really want some more understanding. It's like I'm coming right there, but I really just need some understanding. Ma'am, my number is 679-2413. Most of you have them. 679-2413. Give me a call. We'll sit down. We'll go through the word together. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It works. I know it works. So we, we all come this way. We all come the same way. We all have to repent. And I know you want to. You really, really want to. But you just feel stuck. Hallelujah to God. You do you feel stuck. You want to do it? And you may be thinking, God won't take me. I'm just too messed up or whatever. He'll take me. He's just that type of guy. That's what's so awesome about God. It doesn't matter. We said, well, you know what? If I can stop doing this and stop doing this first, he said, if you come to me, I'll help you stop right now. You don't think I gotta get all ten things cleaned up first. He said, no, you can repent and have faith in me, I'll do it. Because if that was the case, man, we'd all be lost. Wouldn't none of us be here. I didn't stop everything, didn't say, I think, okay, let me stop these things and not just say. No. And I was ready to say. Hey, Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. We appreciate you, Lord God. We thank you for mercy and grace. We ask that you continue to help us, Lord God. For those, Lord God, even in the valley of decision, for those, Lord God, that want to, just, just feel stuck, Lord God, we ask that you allow the word of God to continue to touch their heart, Lord God. Increase their faith. Help them make a change to come to you. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord, right now. We ask you to help us, Lord. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, for a generation, Lord God, that will serve you and seek your face. We carefully give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's please give him a praise. Smile a little bit now. Yeah, smile a little bit. You know, you know there's a part of me where I just love, love off the calls. Sometimes I love watching the faces. It's like, oh, here it comes. I mean, you know, I, I, mean, I wish I'd be getting off the call and have some of the people in the church when I get off the Man, there was times I was the only person in there and I'd say, and the pastor would be like, is there one? <laughs> is there one? I'm the only one in that thing. He look at me, is there one here that want to be saved? I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, oh, I do want to be saved, but I don't feel like getting up right now. And I was like, I do want to be saved, but man, I'm just, I was just stuck. No, really, I'm just stuck. I'm just stuck. He'll sing a song, come on, come on, come on, don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, don't you want to go? Say, come on, come on, come on, don't you want to go? in the morning and wake me up 
and say, Pastor, I can't take it no more. Come on. And I say, meet me at the church. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I don't think I ain't been, old, been in the midnight hour with somebody before I'm done. Wake me up. I hope we don't let you sleep. <laughs> what do you choose, y'all? Some of y'all squirming right now. He's like, what are you doing? I ain't cursing you. I'm blessing you. Yeah. <laughs> God, bless you so much. And you need to just touch your heart. Touch your mind. I hope you don't have any, any rest. Do you say, I can't take it no more? I'm tired, I just can't make it. I'm praying in Jesus' name. I'm applying the blood right now. Jesus. See, I thought I was joking, but I was just as serious as a heart attack. Oh, I hope everything that you do until you come to him just crumble. So you think, oh, you can say, man, what's wrong with it? You just preaching fire. No, no. I mean, you know what? Because this thing is so real. I'm just not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Woo, hallelujah to God. I'm not satisfied. So whatever it is that's holding you, I pray that you tear that thing down in your life. Whatever it is that's holding you, I pray that you tear it down. But if you put your trust in outside of him, I hope it comes to know right. Until you give your life and say, okay, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I, I, heard, that, I heard that music and get a little extra preaching, you know, so I'm Amen. Hey, man, I was getting ready to make an announcement until it kicked in. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel that. Now, y'all can come and say, Pastor, why did you do that later? Because I've been miserable. You know, what are you talking about? Just let you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just letting you know right now. Man, this fire, all this is about to be real. I'm, I'm loving it right now. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, we just gonna wait. We gonna wait and see. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm telling you, I'm feeling it. Oh, y'all about to be messed up. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I almost feel bad. Just almost. Why you crying? I'm going to cry with you. But we're going to get it right. Woo, God, hallelujah, God. Give me strength, Lord. Give me strength for the midnight call that's coming. Give me strength, Lord, right now for the, the nights that I'm going to talk to the people because they cannot sleep. Give me strength, Lord, right now. Y'all pray for me. I, I'm just that serious. Y'all know I ain't playing, right? Watch what happens. Don't let your pride get in the way and say, man. Go ahead. 679 2413. The way of announcement. Starting tomorrow, 